these days with the kid, I'm almost always broke. So I can't say no to any game, even one as low as the Brooklyn Public Library. <laughs> on my way out the door, on CNN, I see a poet I knew from the New York and being interviewed about stop and frisk. He's an actor now, one of those stars in a brand new cop show. I take a deep breath and tell myself, Stacey, are you doing okay? You're holding your own. Keys in hand, I dash through the rain to my car. I see the glass shards before I see the space where the fucking window was. Fuck, man. Now I'm going to be late for my almost free gate, and this shit is going to cost me money I don't have. The pounding rain is already pooling onto the floor of the car. I can't even see the maps anymore. I'm so mad. Mad about being late, mad about the window, mad about the fucking gig I had agreed to be mad, about the fuckers getting roles on new TV shows while I am struggling with money. I'm suddenly mad at everybody and everything, at the library for being underfunded, at the government for not giving us more help, single mothers and pregnant women who have no help from anyone else. But to be honest, mostly I'm just mad at myself for thinking that being a poet was a good fucking career choice for anyone who wanted to fucking afford anything. <laughs> <laughs> She has to babysit Zuri for longer than the hour she insisted on. Mm -hmm. I hate that fucking word, man. When the cops come, a young woman and a, a young man and a woman about 40, they ask if anything is missing. I tell them there was fucking nothing to take. A couple of diapers, a couple of copies of the book I wrote. There was absolutely fucking nothing in there. Why the fuck would they break a window of a car that has nothing in there? Every question they ask. I answer, and then I shout, fuck. <laughs> I'm a little worried if they can resist, if they can arrest me for saying fuck so much, but I just, but they just stand there looking sympathetic and waiting as I say fuck, fuck, and fuck over again. How far is your gig, the 40 year old woman asks. Not far, I say, fucking Grand Army Plaza. How late are you? Very fucking late, I say. <laughs> okay. You just hop in, and then she turns on the flashing lights, and that's how I end up in the back of a New York City cop car. <laughs> lights flashing, riding on the wrong side of the road, in the rain, courtesy of the fucking NYPD. <laughs> As I watch the city speed by, it dawns on me how ridiculous my day has been. And just like that, my anger just dissipates. I tell a final man, of course, and I tell the two police officers how much I appreciate their help. It is only then that the woman says to me that years ago, she took a straight woman who was in a bad situation with a group of a man on a first date to my one woman show. The girl was so moved by the show and so turned on by the sex bombs that she fucked my good Samaritan cop like silly <laughs> And then she went home and left the abusive husband. My Samaritan cop was in the closet then so she had never told anyone the story. But she always wanted to thank me. So thank you, she said. <laughs> that is fucking amazing. <laughs> when I throw open the doors of the library, my spine is a ramrod straight. So what if I don't have my own fucking TV show? I mean, what the fuck if I'm broke? My work, my fucking work, creates an atmosphere in which women are unabashedly bringing each other to multiple orgasms. <laughs> <laughs> That's just like snippets of the show from, um, from that's coming out in the fall. It's called Motherstruck. Um, Cynthia Nixon is, is um, yeah, Cynthia Nixon is, um, is, is directing, and Rosie O'Donnell is producing, so you really should make it. Uh, please give us some support on that. I have one more poem for you, and then... Um, some questions. Some questions, right? Right. And then you'll buy... How many books do you have over there? No. 